In April 2020, New Jersey's entire unemployment system collapsed. Millions of people suddenly out of work, no way to get benefits. The governor stood at a press conference, panicking, and made a desperate plea. We have systems that are 40 plus years old. There will be a lot of postmortems, but programmers who understand COBOL, we need them now. Why COBOL? A language older than the internet, older than floppy disks, older than nearly every living software engineer. Suddenly, it was all anyone could talk about. The ghost of a programming language that somehow still controlled banks, airports, and the US government had re-emerged. But to understand why the world was still held hostage by this digital fossil, we need to go back to the woman who saw it coming before anyone else did. It is the 1950s. Computers were enormous, clunky machines that filled entire rooms. And programming them? Well, it meant feeding them punch cards with binary instructions line by line. However, one woman, Grace Hopper, looked at this and said, Why not just use English? Her vision was simple. Make programming human readable, a shared language anyone could use, no matter the machine. She began working on the first compilers, code that would let humans write like a humans, and the computer would handle the translation. The result was flowmatic. It was revolutionary. It let people write code using words like add and if and perform. Other companies noticed that in 1959, at a press conference with the US Department of Defense, Flowmatic became the inspiration for something even bigger. It was meant to be the Esperanto of computers, easy to read, endlessly portable, and built to last. But no one expected how long it would last, and how many billions of dollars it would come to control. But COBOL wasn't just revolutionary, it was also a trap, and the world didn't realize they were walking right into it until decades later. The timing could have been better. The 1960s were the dawn of computer right business, governments, banks, insurance companies, all desperate to move faster, digitize records, and crunch massive amounts of data. COBOL was perfect. It was readable, it was simple, and perhaps most importantly, it worked. Companies started pouring millions into COBOL systems. Payroll, tax records, airline reservations, all written in this new universal code. By the 1970, COBOL was everywhere, and since it was designed for long-term business logic, companies expected to use it for decades. But there's the twist. It worked too well. COBOL systems were so stable that companies never bothered replacing them. Year after year, update after update, they just kept layering patches on top. And over time, these systems became too critical, too tangled, and too expensive to replace. They called it legacy code, but really, it was more like digital concrete. Once it is set in place, there was no digging out. And then came the year 2000. Thank you for coming. We're going to make some history together today. By the late 1990s, there were whispers. COBOL code written in the 60s and 70s had a fatal flaw. Dates were stalled using only two digits, 99 for 1999, but when the calendar hit 00, systems might interpret that as 1900. Banking interest would fail. Social security. Oh my god, okay, it's happening. Aircraft software could glitch. Nuclear missiles, well, you get the point. Billions of dollars were suddenly poured into Y2K readiness. And guess what most of that money went toward? Hiring old COBOL programmers. Some had been retired for 20 years, 
Some came out of retirement just to read 40-year-old code and patch date fields. Every boat and every bridge in America and then the world. And you only have 21 months to do it. The easy to understand risk was the system stops. The more insidious risk was, and that's what worried people about their bank accounts, is the system keeps running, it's just got bad data. The fix to the code was fairly simple. You just had to go through and every place it said two digits, you had to give it instructions to say four. But pouring through reams of old software code to find each and every date reference was a labor-intensive process. We simply did not have enough programmers in the United States who could do this. One of the surprises of the Y2K problem was it gave a boost to outsourcing software work to India. The crisis was largely averted, but something even more important happened. For the first time, the world saw the terrifying reality. Global infrastructure, all the gears turning behind ATMs, airports, pensions, passports, was still running on COBOL, and no one was training the next generation to understand it. That lack of training would come back to haunt us, not in the 2000s, but 20 years later, when the whole system nearly broke again. Governments issue emergency unemployment benefits. Tens of millions apply at once. And just like that, legacy systems written in COBOL buckle under pressure. States like New Jersey and Kansas publicly beg for COBOL programmers. Their problem? Most of them are either retired or dead. The young programmers trained in Python, JavaScript, and C++ look at COBOL and see hieroglyphics. It is not just old. It's a different way of thinking. COBOL wasn't built for modern networking. Debunking it is like untangling millions of wires without knowing what any of them are connected to. One estimate in 2020 claimed that 220 billion lines of COBOL still exist across global systems. That's 80% of in-person financial transactions. We're not stuck with COBOL because we love it. We're stuck with COBOL because we're scared of what happens if we try to replace it. Some governments have started full-on migrations away from COBOL. The US Social Security Administration tried, so did the IRS. Each time it ended in delays and millions of dollars over budget. And ironically, a return to COBOL. Private companies aren't faring much better. Banks like JP Morgan and Citibank still run mainframes with millions of COBOL lines. Their engineers admitted it would take decades to rebuild everything. But there is a new movement underway. Some developers are now trying to make COBOL modern. Open source tools like COBOL Script and GNU COBOL aim to bring COBOL into the 21st century. Not because it is fun, but because it pays. In a way, COBOL is becoming the blue collar goldmine of tech. Not glamorous, but essential, and still running the world. COBOL was designed in 1959. The people who wrote it thought it might last a few years, a decade at most, but never refused to die, similar to the video game Skyrim. Hey, you. Finally awake. You. They couldn't imagine a future with iPhones, quantum computers, or artificial intelligence. But maybe that's why it's still here, because it was written without expecting change, just pure logic and plain English. COBOL is the quiet infrastructure of the digital age. Not the shiny apps, not the headlines, but the gears behind your paycheck, your plane ticket, and your tax return. And maybe the reason it survived is because it wasn't trying to be revolutionary. It just worked. And for the world's most important systems, that's still enough. COBOL isn't just code. It's a time capsule. A living fossil from an era when computers filled basements. And yet, it's still here. Still running trillions of dollars through invisible wires. Still printing your bank statements. Still issuing government checks. The people who wrote it are mostly gone. But their code lives on. And every time you swipe a card, book a flight, or file taxes, you're speaking their language. Even if you don't know it.